Hi there, here we are for the next in the series of interviews celebrating 10 years of synesthesia. Today's theme is people and inclusion, and I'm going to be speaking with Elisa Carson, the young American astronaut who, at just 18 years old, was one of the first people to complete the NASA passport program. Hi Elisa, how are you today? Hi, I'm doing good, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. How are things over there in Florida? Sunny day for you? <laughs> yeah, it's always sunny. Um, everything is going good. Just typical day of classes. Brilliant. Just a typical day for a young woman in her NASA boiler suit. <laughs> now, I know you're in Florida, but you grew up in Louisiana, didn't you? Yes, I did. Okay, so from Louisiana to Florida, from jazz to the stars, tell us, what was your first ambition for becoming an astronaut? Yeah, I mean, I first got interested in space when I was just a little girl. Um, of course, I don't remember everything too exactly from when I was that young, but my dad does remember me like coming and asking questions about space and Mars, pretty much, you know, have astronauts been to Mars? Is space real? You know, I knew nothing at the time. And my dad, nor anyone in my family really had any sort of background in space or science or anything related. So my dad told me a little bit about the missions to the moon. Um, but then said, you know, one day we could go to Mars. And that, you know, really piqued my interest in general about space. So I started asking for books and videos and posters and all sorts of information that I could get my little hands on about space. And the passion really just like sparked and kept going from there. <laughs> and what busy hands they were at a young age, Elisa. <laughs> Now, the recent rover that was on Mars was called Perseverance. From your point of view, how much perseverance, how much tenacity have you needed to get to where you are now? Yeah, um, definitely, you know, throughout everything that I've done, essentially what I am basically doing is just like building a resume to eventually apply to the astronaut selection process. Um, however, there's not really any way to do it. You know, there's not a checklist, you know, you do this, this and this, and then you can become an astronaut. Um, it's not quite like that. And so I think that when I was younger, it was just a lot of like perseverance in terms of like trying to figure out what I wanted to do, you know, trying to do something different, do something kind of more out of the box. Um, and that's kind of like what I've been doing this whole time is looking for those opportunities to kind of help stand out for eventually when I do apply. But I think that was kind of the biggest part of it. And also, you know, during the selection process, it's a pretty intense selection process, you know, a whole lot of people, a whole lot of people apply. And so I think it's really important to, you know, try to be confident in yourself and your abilities. So that way, you know, if you think that you can do it, I definitely think that it's something more achievable. It's a really strong story that you've got, Elisa, and already at such a young age. Now, I imagine for this selection process that what comes into it is really a balance, a balance between character, ambition and technical skill. What does that mean for you? What does that balance look like? Yeah, there definitely has to be a balance. Um, you know, something that was really important for me growing up was keeping like a balanced life. You know, of course, I love space. Of course, I wanted to do stuff for space, but I also wanted to keep a balance and do all the normal things as well. And there was a lot of reasons for that. I think one to kind of keep my interest in space, you know, because if I think if I was always talking about space 24 seven, I'd probably get bored of it at some point. But since I was doing so much else, I never really had that. I was always excited to do something about space. Um, but also at the same time, keeping that balance in terms of skill and character, like you're saying, um, of course, to be an astronaut, you have to be really good at what you do. And typically what you do is very science, math can get pretty hard. Um, the, that those kinds kinds of studies can just get a little intense. Um, but I do think that there's a lot of, um, like you said, a lot of those character sides that come into play, you know, being able to work well with other people, work with a team, you know, you're going to be stuck with the same people for quite some time. You have to um, learn how to problem solve, not get, you know, too shaken up by little things. And so a lot of those character things are super important. And I definitely think that there is a lot that goes into the selection process. It's not just, you know, 
know, let's say straight A's in school. Um, it's going to be a lot about what they need, what um, what is really happening right now in the space industry, what kind of person do they really need to fill, um, and then, of course, your skills and also you as a person. So it's always thinking about the balance. Yeah, I mean, there really are a lot of things you need to work through as you're, as you're working towards this ambitious goal. And, and you touched on there about the evolution of the space industry and looking towards the future. Um, I think on social networks, your, your, your username is um, Future Mars Walker. Is that right? I usually go under NASA Blueberry. Uh, okay. Yeah, that is something I do want to ask you about. And I'll come to that in just a minute. But am I right in thinking that your, your ambition is to be the first person that walks on Mars? Is, is that right? Yeah, I do have future Mars Walker in my bio. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And um, so when you, when you think about that first step on Mars, what, how does that look to you? How does that feel? What do you think that's going to be like? Yeah, totally. You know, Mars is going to be really different from living on Earth. Um, you know, we're going to have our habitat. It would be almost thinking like every single time you left your house, you had to put on a spacesuit. It's kind of a good way to picture it. Um, but pretty much a lot of what we're going to be doing, of course, is going to be science, but also at the same time, we're going to be doing a lot of just like, I like to think of it as like chores, you know, housework, keeping the air filters clean, maybe growing, um, growing some plants for food, um, you know, little tasks like that. So I kind of picture it as more of like a relaxed lifestyle, you know, just like me and a few people hanging out on Mars, growing some plants, um, doing a little bit of science here and there. So I kind of picture it as pretty relaxed, but also so like in terms of what Mars looks like, I think um, going back a little bit to the Perseverance rover, you know, we've gotten a lot of really amazing images from Perseverance so far. And I think even looking at some of those, it's so amazing to actually get more of a realistic view of Mars. And, you know, Mars's atmosphere isn't as thick, so you can see a whole lot more stars for Mars than you can do from Earth. So I think it's just really going to be a lot of incredible sights. <laughs> Housekeeping on Mars, that sounds like, it sounds pretty good to me, actually. It sounds nice, especially with all of the stars, like you said. Now, I want to go back to the point about your Blueberry Foundation. I've read that, that you set this up as a way of promoting STEM and the area of STEM with young females. That's a subject that's also close to our heart here at Synesthesia. It's, it's a really nice thing that we have in common. Um, but I'd like to let you explain it a bit more. Please tell me about the, the inspiration, the idea behind your Blueberry Foundation. Yeah, definitely. Um, I had originally started the Blueberry Foundation. Um, Blueberry is like my call sign, so it's kind of like a nickname, but it was given to me. Um, and so I really wanted to start the foundation because going to space camp for the first time really made such a huge difference in my interest of space. And I really wanted other people to have that opportunity as well. Um, more recently, we've been doing a lot of like out of country stuff. So like having a group uh, or getting a group together from Mexico and sending them to space camp or from Argentina and sending them to space camp and just kind of giving these kids um, the ability to see really what the options are for them. You know, you do have the possibility of working in the space industry or being an astronaut or doing something along those lines. And so I uh, really just wanted to give that, but definitely encouraging girls in STEM is of course super important, um, something that I've absolutely loved to do. Um, but I think not only just like encouraging them, but really just like teaching them all the options that they have. I think that that when we are young, kids in general, we just kind of get told a lot of the same jobs, whether that's doctor, teacher, lawyer, um, all of those are great. Um, but yeah, I do think that we kind of get stuck in those same few jobs. Whereas, you know, even within space, you know, you would think scientist, astronaut, engineer, whereas there's so much more than that. There's people who design spacesuits, there's people who have to figure out how to package the food for the astronauts. There's psychologists, there's journalists, there's so many aspects of space that are just as important as all the hard, rigorous math and science. Um, and so I think the cool thing is, you know, you don't even have to like math and science to be involved in the space industry. And so getting like the opportunity to kind of teach um, kids and young girls about all these opportunities that they have and how they can mix their interests and really do what they want and kind of think more outside the box has been such an amazing experience. 
Sure, and, and I can see that from the way you're, you're speaking about that subject. And quite honestly, some of the things you've just described there are new to me. I can imagine that they're so inspiring for the young generation to hear. But look, let's bring it back. Let's bring it back to Earth for a minute. From housekeeping on Mars to, uh, to us here today, Elisa, what do you see as the future of STEM? Um, what, what's, your, what's your vision for how, how that subject's going to roll out here? Yeah, I do think that STEM is progressing a lot in the next few years. I think not even, you know, obviously STEM is such a wide range of different subjects and different career paths. But I mean, even just thinking within the space industry, um, you know, the space industry is about to be growing so much. And that's just because, you know, we have a lot coming up, you know, with the ideas of going back to the moon, going to Mars, not only um, that, but also commercial space, all these other companies, because there aren't just like the major space agencies. There's also SpaceX, Virgin Galactic, Blue Origin, Boeing, so many other companies companies that are so active in space and continuing to do stuff. And I think, you know, SpaceX starts having more of their own astronauts, their own astronaut selection process. You know, we also bring in the idea of space tourism coming into play, making that more of a thing. And so I think kind of in the next years, um, in STEM in general, but yeah, space and STEM, you know, I think there's just going to be a huge increase of jobs and opportunities within both of those fields, just because there's going to be so much new stuff and so many new cool jobs to go into um, because, yeah, once we start space tourism, you know, maybe we'll have space tourism luggage and space tourism flight attendants. Who knows? A lot of those like weird ideas start becoming more and more of, of reality. And so I think we're going to slowly fall to um, see some of that. Brilliant. I mean, the way you outline that, it's, it's so exciting and space tourism and like you say, all of the roles that go with it, it's, it's exciting, isn't it? Now, when you talked about your Blueberry Foundation, you have a very clear vision for what that can mean for, for young females, for individuals, about really stimulating their passion and interest in, in that education area. But what's your message, Elisa, I'm interested to know, to institutions? What's your message to institutions in this, this area, this industry, for equality? Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, as we look at a lot of these more larger companies and institutions, um, obviously there's like a lot to tackle, but um, kind of talking a little bit in terms of like women in STEM, you know, over the past few years, as we've, as we've worked to include more women in STEM, I think, you know, we have made a lot of progress. I do think that there's a lot more, for example, female astronauts chosen in the selection process. And, um, you know, the idea of sending a woman back to the moon or for the first time time. And so I think a lot of that is really amazing. But I truly think that the next steps for a lot of these companies is really getting more women at across all the jobs. So it takes tens of thousands of people to send one astronaut into space. And so I think it's important that we're not only including more women in like that one astronaut who's going to be more publicly seen, but also women across all those different fields, because I can almost guarantee that there's still some department that only has one woman working there. And so I think kind of the key message is remembering that it trickles down to every level and every level needs that inclusion and every level needs more women involved. Um, and so I truly think that like that's really our next steps is just now that we've kind of covered a little bit of these more like top top jobs that are gaining more women, but also now all these other jobs as well. Great. I mean, it's such a clear vision that you've got, Elisa, such a clear vision for for individuals and for institutions, you know, for the industry as a whole. Look, thank you so much for having the time to speak with us today. Thank you for sharing all of your thoughts, um, your ambition, your experience. We, um, we wish you the very best with all of your projects, with, uh, with Blueberry Foundation um, and with all of your next steps on Earth and on Mars. Um, and we very much look forward to seeing your progress um, and all of, the, all of the things that you do um, in the future. Thank you. Yeah, thank you guys so much.